Hey, planting science teachers and liaisons. In this video, we're going to review the steps required to recruit mentors to the group so they can work with your student teams. This can be done before or after creating the actual team projects. Um, but ideally, it's advised to have the mentors in place before the students log in because it just makes the process of getting everyone acquainted much smoother. However, mentors can be added and changed at any time, so do whatever makes sense for your group. Um, to recruit mentors, we're going to want to come to the members page. And you're going to look for this button way out here to the right that says invite members. This is going to take you to a page that asks you to indicate how many you're looking to invite. Um, you need a mentor for every group. So starting out, you're probably going to put in the number of groups that you expect to have students for. Um, in this case, we're going to assume I need four. So I'm going to change this number to four and I'm going to click next. So that brings us to the scientist, uh, the scientist gallery. And this has been set up so that the only mentors that you're going to see here, the only prospective mentors you're going to see are scientists that have indicated that they are comfortable working with the investigation theme you're using for your for this session. Uh, they're comfortable working with the student age level that you have in your group and that they are available. Now, they may have indicated that they're available, but things have happened. So just be patient with them because, you know, just as in, with teaching, they are also teaching. So they're a lot of them are um, may have teaching schedules or research schedules that change unexpectedly. But for the most part, the ones at the top that are automatically checked, because remember I said I needed four, the system automatically checks the top four matches for me. Now, I do want to note that they each have these two rings on them. And so if you're wondering what those are, you'll notice that every scientist says how many possible. As our scientists uh, register with the program, they indicate how many groups or how many project teams they think they can comfortably mentor in a given session. So if I were to scroll down here to the very bottom of the list, and it is pretty long, we have a wonderful selection of early career scientists that are eager to volunteer their time and work with students. Um, when we come all the way down here to the bottom, though, you can see some of these have those rings partially filled in. So the top ring, which appears in red, that shows how many groups they've committed to mentor already. The bottom one, which is in yellow, you'll see that down here, that indicates how many invitations they have pending right now. And so you'll notice that anybody who's already full or anybody who has invitations pending is automatically sorted to the bottom in the hopes that we can kind of spread the invitations around a little bit. Um, but you can still offer to invite some of them. A lot of times though, those are not going to be your best, uh, your best chance of actually getting them to commit. So, uh, so we're going to scroll back up to the top and here's those, those four that are automatically selected for me. And you, can go with those or you can uncheck them and select someone else. Reasons why you might do that would include like say you know you have uh, students who speak Spanish and it would really be helpful to them to have a mentor who speaks the same language. You can click on uh, the mentor profiles here and read them and see if they are able to work with Spanish speaking students. So that might be something to think about. Um, but for the most part, most people just kind of take the first ones that pop up. Anyway, then you're going to click next and that'll bring you to the invite screen. Now on the invite screen, when you go through that gallery, it's going to preload in the usernames for all of the people that you had checked off. Uh, and there is already a message that you can send out to your invitees. However, if you want to delete this and start over, you can. You can put in anything that makes sense. You can personalize it however you want, or you can send it as is. It's designed to be done as is if that's more comfortable for you. Uh, once you've done that, you can click send invites and send them. Now, obviously, I'm not actually inviting these folks to a group. So I'm actually going to back out of this without sending this invite and show you the other way that you can recruit mentors. So I'm going to go back to my group here and I'm going to go to members and I'm going to invite members again. So, so far that's the same. But if you have worked with planting science in the past and you want to invite specific people that you know you've worked with, that worked well with your students, that sort of thing, you can click on invite others. And what that does is it bypasses the gallery entirely and gives me a blank 
names and email addresses field. So in this case, I think I'm going to invite Amazing Mentor because I've worked with Amazing Mentor in the past and there they are. Okay, so it, it will do a search and show you everybody who matches that string. You can select that person and then you can send the invite. Okay, so now when I go to my mentors page, I just want you to notice that Amazing Mentor does not appear here because they have not responded to the invitation yet. However, if I notice that my invitees tab now has one person in it. So if I click there, there she is. Now, it has a timestamp on it that tells me exactly when I sent the invite. That's important because, again, some of our scientists may have thought they were available, but then something came up. Maybe an opportunity to go into the field came up that they didn't expect or their schedule changed or something. So a lot of our mentors will accept. Some may decline because they receive the invitation, but they realize it's not going to work for them. Or they may not respond at all. And that happens. When that does, try to be patient with the mentor. That's not anything personal. They probably just didn't see the invitation for whatever reason. Um, but you don't want to just linger on that either. And you don't want that invitation to just sit there. So after three to five days, especially after a weekend, give them like a weekend to check their email and because they will get the message by email and on their platform. Um, if they have not replied, then you want to go ahead and click this X and cancel the, the invitation. It will give you a box where you can put in a message that just says, hey, you know, we found other people or we're going to go ahead and move on. Um, the mentors do understand that this is how it works, though. So you don't have to worry too much that they're going to feel bad that you switched it. Um, however, on their page, this is what the mentor will see that they have an invitation pending here. So if the mentor then accepts it, and I'm back at the other page now. Now if I come back to my members page, and I refresh, notice that now the mentor is there. Now mentors have a member flag on them, not a manager flag. They cannot go in and edit the group settings. They can't set up projects. They can't do any of that. But they can do, you know, what they can be is assigned to a project team and then allowed to work with that team. Um, and that's it. That is how it's done. Uh, from here, you will go on to just assigning them to groups. And again, we're going to cover that in a separate video. Um, if you run into any problems, if you have questions about how to do this, if you are um, just are having trouble getting responses, please reach out to us as PS team. We are here to help you. And uh, that's, we really, we want this to be a good experience for you and for your students. So. Thank you so much and have a great day.